five architecture. So this is very high level architecture that I want to talk about related to Hive. So when we talk about Hive, actually Hive is running on some distributed processing framework and this distributed processing framework can be MapReduce, it can be Spark, it can be Taze. So there can be different types of distributed processing framework on which Hive can run. And then we have like uh, another layer here which is like a distributed storage layer and distributed storage layer can be HDFS or HBase. So these are some examples of distributed storage layer. And this stack is actually running on Java and uh, this Java is mandatory for all the components that I'm showing here. Now Hive uh, is basically for data analysis and uh, as I mentioned, uh, this is logical architecture of Hive and uh, actually what happens, Hive is kind of uh, client of big data cluster, but we do have some server side component, but that we can ignore for the time being just understand hive is submitting jobs so hive is responsible for let's say when we say responsibility so responsible for parsing the queries so whatever queries you will write you have to parse it so that is very first responsibility the hive will be planning apart from that hive will be optimizing the queries that is being planned apart from that hive will submit the jobs and then I will be monitoring it. So these are few responsibilities of Hive uh, and uh, you can see like uh, this is like uh, going to the cluster and then we will be monitoring that. Let's see uh, these three things are done on the client side or with the Hive side. So like planning and optimizing and this is done on the, the data processing cluster and then monitoring is also like happening from the data processing cluster to the uh, place where from where you actually submitted the hive uh, query. So now just understand this thing like uh, when we say hive actually hive has metadata also metadata and this metadata is stored in metastore and metastore is a default name this is a name of uh, RDBMS uh, the database name of database which is in RDBMS. So this is default and uh, this is a meta store. We will referring to that like where metadata is stored for Hive and uh, this is in RDBMS and we will see how it looks like. So this is metadata and uh, data is stored in HDFS, the distributed file system and uh, Hive when we submit queries. So what happens basically like let's say this is our terminal and in this terminal we are having a uh, let's say hive you will write hive this is old way but it's not recommended now uh, but you will be writing b line shell so b line is another cli so you will be writing this or this so you will be writing b line b line and then parameters so this is a cli command line interface cli command line interface cli of this is hive server 2 this is a newer architecture hive server 2 architecture and this one is cli of hive now let's say we are having this terminal and in terminal we are writing a query and we are in hive shell and within hive shell we are writing some query so this query first goes to the meta store this is rdbms and this query goes to the meta store and then this is hdfs and here it executes mr jobs this is like getting the schema and it is stored in RDBMS and then this is MapReduce jobs which are being executed on the cluster or maybe sparse job or page jobs executing on the cluster. So uh, the metadata is stored here, data is stored here, data is here and metadata is here. So Hive has a dependency of having RDBMS and RDBMS can be of different types. It can be MySQL, it can be Oracle or it can be Postgres. So these are the three standard RDBMS you will usually find as recommended by many vendors like Cloudera. So this is like high level picture. But the problem with this is like whenever we are starting Hive Shell, so it's basically having credentials of the database. So every data analyst who is working with Hive will have access to the Metastore, uh, the database credentials. And uh, it is having this problem like we cannot uh, do any throttling of queries or it's like uh, there is no auditing also happening. So there are many 
limitations of this architecture so in hive server 2 architecture what happened basically this is the name of the b line shell so it connects to so you will give the parameter jdbc colon localhost colon 10000 so jdbc colon hive 2 basically you will be connecting to hive 2 server so from here you will be connecting to hive 2 server hive server 2 and from hive server 2 you will be making a connection to rdbms and then we have SDFS. This Hive Server 2 basically will store all the uh, credentials of this database and the Hive Server 2 uh, will have option to do throttling of query like we have a connection pool. So your administrator can control like uh, you can reduce the number of connections to database, you can control that and you can do auditing and many other features can be implemented. So it's like a centralized server from where we will connect to the our meta store and our data like which is in HDFS. So this is much better architecture in terms of maintaining let's say I want to change the password of the database then I don't have to change on each and every data analyst machine but here in this architecture I will just go there and change it at one place. If I have to upgrade the database, let's say I want to change the driver of the database, then again I will not be changing on each and every machine, I will be just changing at one location. So maintaining this is very easy, maintenance is easy. Apart from that, uh, you will find uh, it is also helpful in security because you are not exposing your credentials, security is better here. So th these are some of the advantages that I mentioned. So this is a recommended architecture rather than this one because uh, this is newer and better in terms of maintenance and security and uh, throttling of queries. Yeah. So hope you got this idea. So now uh, we will see some hands-on related to Hive.